Okay, so we got a parasitic draw on this Ford F-150. Um, we do see a bunch of questionable wiring. Um, we probably suspect that would be the issue. But first off, what I do, the latch, close that, and then the vehicle thinks that our door is closed, and then we can continue, continue our testing, uh, gaining access to here as if nothing's open. Because don't forget, on newer vehicles, uh, modules stay alive. You gotta wait for them to shut down. Sometimes they take half an hour forever and go to sleep. So you can be fooled. Um, this particular one is not uh, a, an even draw. It's on all the time. It's kind of a come and go, come and go. Draws about two amps, one and a half to two amps or so for just a small period of time and then shuts down and then does that on and off. Not, not totally uh, um, constant. Um, so I've got an amp clamp around both of the negative leads coming off of the the battery. Doesn't matter which one you go on, but obviously if you look at the positive in this one, there's too much coming off the positive. So whereas the negative, that will capture everything. Because the reason why we want that, uh, let me just quickly save this. So if we go, we'll turn that off. If we go back to record, so this is what it's doing. This is the current that's going through it. That'd be awfully hard to figure out um, whether or not you're on the right aspect. You, you know, if you're looking at the right fuse because it's not all the time um, draw. So what we can do is if you take your multimeter, or in this case a graphing meter, it'd be hard to do it otherwise. If you put both of your leads on say either side of a fuse, you will see a voltage drop difference between the two terminals if there's current flowing through that. Um, so you could just use a multimeter on say the millivolt scale because um, it won't be a, a huge difference. But what you'd have to do in a case like this, because it's not all the time, you'd have to check a fuse, stay on the fuse for 30 seconds or so to make sure that you caught it. So what we want to do is we have a two channel graphing multimeter, makes it much easier. So the one channel, the one that we have up right now is our amp clamp that's out there. Uh, so we can see when it's happening. So we'll pull up another channel, um, this will be the voltage and Okay, so I didn't really notice this until I started editing. Um, the big spikes on the green trace is actually because I have peak detect on. Uh, now that I got a picoscope, I don't really use the snap on meter very much anymore. I didn't notice that. Um, so all peak detect does is it means that whatever goes through our leads, it will report. It doesn't do any sampling. It doesn't do any averaging, um, even though <laughs> I do have filter selected, uh, that snap on for you. But yeah, so the big spikes, if you get that on yours, just make sure you don't have peak detect on. Um, even with peak detect on, uh, as soon as I hook up the leads across um, anything that has continuity, that will go away. Um, but yeah, it's pretty distracting. Kind of wish I noticed that and turned that off. But um, well, carry on, and if you have one of these and it's doing that, then just make sure you don't have beat detect on. Um, so anyways, uh, back to the video. When nothing's touching, you're gonna see this sort of stuff, but once you touch stuff, that will go away. So now, this might be hard to do with one hand. Come on. Okay, now with both of those channels up, we can see that they're both happening at the same time. So if we go back, we pause this. So we can see that in the yellow, that's our current going through the battery, that's everything going through the battery. And then this green trace 
is the voltage drop difference between that uh, that fuse. Now, if you look at the fuse, you look at the rating of the fuse and the style of the fuse, you can find voltage drop to current charts. So this is an ATO fuse. Um, usually what I do is I just type in uh, um, Power Probe has a chart um, on their website. So I'll just Google uh, Power Probe um, voltage drop fuse chart, something like that, and I'll get the chart and I'll look up uh, 20 amp ATO fuse and I can enter in my millivolt uh, drop which in this case it's say 50 millivolts and that can tell me how many uh, milliamps are going across it and it's different for every fuse um, I can do that if I wanted to but I can see that these match perfectly so I know that that in fact is the draw um, so if you have a case like this where it's not all the time and it's random, it's kind of difficult to do without something like a graphing multimeter. Now the other thing we can do as well, since this vehicle hasn't been run in a while, you got the Predator Vision thermal imager and you can see that that does light up. Now it's not tremendously bright compared to the rest of the um, surrounding area because if you look at if we get that glare out of there um, if we look at the scale on the right the hottest temperature it can see is 86 87 the lowest is 77 um, so it's not like it's just scorching hot compared to ambient but we can see that that is lighting up so that is getting warmer than ambient whereas if we're over here let's get you a little closer So if we're over here, we can see other stuff that that's got heat. So there is that guy right there that's awfully warm, probably a relay. Um, but this fuse here, this aftermarket fuse that's tied in is gonna be pulling power off of some, something in there. Um, so what we can do just as a quick test we'll pull that out and we'll see if there's any other current because this fuse is going to be after this so the spot that's on here that's hot might be because that is feeding this so let's unplug this okay so we got that unplugged come back here we'll go back to record let's save that again go back to record let's turn off this green noise Okay, and uh, so we can see right now we are, um, no, I don't think my meter, I don't think my uh, amp clamp is zeroed. It loses a zero a little bit. Um, let me pull that off and re-zero that. But we can see right now that there's no spikes, it's even. So nothing else is, is creating a draw right now, at least what it was before. But let's see what our actual draw is right now. So let's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off my amp clamp. Uh, I'm going to zero it and put it back on to see what the actual live reading is. So if you do something like this where you have an amp clamp set up, whether it be to a multimeter or a graphing multimeter or anything like that, um, if the currents that go through the amp clamp, if they fluctuate a lot, and then you're looking for the bottom end of the scale, you're looking for really precise measurements, then you'll need to recalibrate it a, a fair amount. So if it's sitting like this, then its measurements will stay pretty accurate, but if all of a sudden it gets a big swing up to say two amps and stays up there for a while, then a lot of times it'll come back down to not a zero anymore. So before you look at that, so if we were to calculate this to milliamps, that would be 400 milliamps um, because right now we're measuring voltage and our scale is um, 100 millivolts is one amp so right now that would say almost half of an amp which would be too much so we suspect that our our um, amp clamp just needs to be re-zeroed so let's do that and look to see what the final measurement is 
Okay, so I pulled it off and re-zeroed our amp clamp, and we still do see uh, 36 millivolts, so that would translate to 360 milliamps. That is still too much. Um, I believe enough time has passed that most, probably everything is turned off since we um, have the door open, and since we fooled it into thinking that the door is closed. So it does appear that there is something else. Uh, 360 milliamps is still enough to drain a battery. Um, at least we don't have that huge spike of the um, you know one to two amps anymore, but still that is more than we'd like. So going back to this guy, let's find out who that is. Okay, so I'll put up a picture because I wasn't able to do it um, while filming, everything just got in the way. But it was coming from this relay right here that's um, hardwired onto the circuit board. Um, so let's try and find out what that is. Um, the guy did tell us there was a couple fuses. Oh, did that just shut off? Uh oh, that's not good. Hmm. Well, that's a little bit better. We lost uh, 50 milliamps. Let's try and re-zero that. Let's see if that actually is better. Um, Cause I tapped something and heard it click. Uh, so let's see if that's any better yet. Okay, so I went to re-zero the amp clamp uh, and then I looked at it and it wasn't any better. Um, we still had 300 milliamps or so current which is enough to kill a battery um, but then I came back here and it went down to next to nothing so it could be that whatever that was tied into was keeping the accessory delay circuit open so let's see if I can pull it up on the wiring diagram if we go the right way hmm wire are we for the next page? Yeah, because um, our customer did say that if you pulled out fuse 21, the draw did seem to go away. So it's very possible um, that whatever was happening was keeping our accessory delay on. But right now, things seem to be good. So we can just continue to monitor it, but I believe that everything should be caused by that. So well, apparently this isn't good enough. Um, he wants to actually know what's wrong. Uh, you know, it's, it's not worth trying to um, diagnose aftermarket stuff and try and reverse engineer everything to figure out what the problem is. Um, no one's willing to pay for that, it's just too time consuming. But we do see there's a whole bunch of corrosion on this relay. So let's open this up, maybe change this relay out. It's possible that uh, maybe this relay is just getting stuck on um, and then that will fix the issue if we just replace this out. So let's pull this out, take a look at the relay, maybe swap it out and see what happens. And this is what it looks like with the tape off. So we'll get a different relay. You can see all that cruddies in there. Um, We'll get a different relay, put it in there, and we'll see if our uh, draw is still there or not once we put this fuse back in. So we put in a different relay. Um, doesn't have all that corrosion. Um, it's still a used relay. Uh, if this were the full fix, I'd just recommend them picking up a brand new relay and putting it in. Um, we put the fuse back in, but we see it's back. Um, Really, that's about the extent that I want to go with this. Because, uh, you know, you, you can be tearing the whole truck apart, looking through everything. No one's going to be paying for that. This, this wire here branches off. we got a wire that comes to this relay. Then the rest of it just goes all the way back. Um, we see aftermarket stereo cabling. So I wouldn't be surprised if that goes to an amp. Um, yeah, they're... Uh, 
yeah, I don't know what to say on this one. Um, if he wants, he can just pull that fuse out when he's done. Otherwise, maybe he can take it to a buddy and they can spend all afternoon, all weekend, um, ripping all the paneling apart, trying to figure out what's wrong. Maybe, maybe whatever it goes to, maybe if it's an amp, maybe the amp inside internally uh, has got issues. Typically, when you see stuff like this where it's straight up spikes, um, typically that's an issue of solid state electronics. Um, not not things like uh, um, you know if a bulb is on as soon as you get power to a bulb you'll see kind of a ramp effect but this being straight up that's yeah it's typically solid state electronics it's not typically anything like a bulb or anything you'd normally find in a normal um, parasitic draw test so yeah we'll talk to the customer and uh, see what they want to do but um, yeah, we don't really want to rip everything apart. So it came to a compromise. If we look where that fuse comes out, that wire it splits to this little red wire that goes to this relay. So I did pull that off and check and see if the draw was still there. And it was still there. So as that wire comes through uh, this paneling and all the way to the back, um, that's where the issue is. It's not anything to do with that relay. Um, so what we can do, because I don't really want to pull that apart, um, because I know we won't get paid for it, it's just, it'll be so time consuming. Um, we can offer to the customer that if they're willing to follow this wire, pull everything out to give us complete access to it, um, to whatever that wire goes to, and the wire all, all along the way, then they can bring it back, we can take a look at it, and see if we can find something out, but chances are whatever it goes to, the box or whatever, it's probably just bad. Um, but uh, rather than just saying, hey, buddy, you're on your own, you know, if they want to pull the legwork to open everything up, sure, by all means, take it back. We'll give a quick look at it. Um, you know, won't even really be a charge uh, unless we have to get really serious with it. But um, yeah, all this stuff, all these aftermarket electronics that people want to put in is super super time consuming people ask us to do that all the time in a shop whether we're willing to put in remote keyless entries remote starts and all that and you know what they got shops for that um, pep boys in the states you know here we got Andre's electronics and visions and other places they'll do that um, no shop can do that in a cost-effective way at um, shop rate so yeah it's just super time consuming if you guys do this stuff yourself really try to take the extra effort to tie everything up um, tape everything secure everything keep it out of water keep it out of moisture but even then you will have issues down the way that's the nature of the business anyways thanks for watching